constantly shifting through the time-space continuum, Metron's three disciples observe the universe from the Mobius Couch. We're back. Ladies and gentlemen, part two. Secret Invasion, part, part two, two, part two. We're Secret back for part uh, two. Mobius Couch, we're back. If you haven't listened to part one, please do so because this is part two. So if you don't see the yeah. original, the sequel is not going to make a lick of sense. So yeah. And if you uh, are back from part one, get ready for more <laughs> complaining for more about the storyline. Yeah, uh, I'm Joe. Hi. I'm Patrick. Yeah. We know he's you. Patrick. <laughs> he's we Patrick. know that you are Patrick. Uh, welcome back. So again, part one is a different podcast. Listen to that. Uh, issues one through four. This is part two. We're going to do issues five through Eight? It's eight. eight. Yeah, uh, eight yeah, yeah. Of Se- Marvel's Secret Invasion. The crossover yeah, I jumped the gun a little bit by starting everything. to talk about five. Yeah, yeah. But let, let's let's get talk it. about five. Let's talk about yeah. issue five. So we're on Thunderbolts Mountain with it. So mm-hmm. this is Marvel Boy, right? It's not Captain Marvel. This is Marvel Boy. No, this that's is Captain Marvel. Marvel. It is Captain. Well, Marvel. it's Scroll Captain Marvel. <laughs> that's well, then who's it's Marvel? Scroll Captain Marvel, Marvel that Marvel thinks Boy. he's Captain Marvel. Well, you have who, to understand, it's very confusing right? being a scroll. Marvel sometimes. Boy is from like, I forget who from created him. Is it like Morrison maybe? He's it like is. from a separate like Marvel, like I don't know if it's Marvel Knights or whatever, but he's like a Kree from a different dimension. He's like got even more powers than a normal Kree and like better technology so i don't really know how like the way he's fit into this story is very random and doesn't make a whole lot of sense the yeah. marvel boy captain marvel stuff is like very random especially if it you're only reading no the eight issues of this storyline not any tie-ins because i also read all the tie-ins and i'm still pretty confused on who the two fucking <laughs> people are so yeah we get like a quick opening scene with fury for five seconds and the new avengers are or the young avengers are with him he's like everyone shut the fuck up it's happening kind of thing and what's happening is the news is on all of the stations and it's all the important people in the world like this paris Hilton, thing that are telling this com- telling the humans that it's okay and that they should just be themselves we're, we're here to save you from yourselves we don't wish you any harm or bloodshed but we'll do what must be done to save you and I think, and like, that's the message. And also they're throwing in all kinds of like Dr. Doom and Tony Stark and Magneto and Reed Richards amongst like Obama and Stephen Colbert of all people. And like, you know, just random and Steve Jobs and random and Namor, you know, you know, all the normal people, Namor and Steve Jobs, you know, Namor and John McCain. You know? This is the other thing about the continuity that makes no sense. So Issue four, Thor and Captain America show up in Times Square fighting all these villains with everybody. Yeah, and nothing now, happens. And yeah, now Nick Fury, network. they're in some hangar somewhere. Well, he Just escaped. The, they they the left hangar. the they left Times Square, you know? I, there should be a scene in between. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's, they're just suddenly in a hangar. That doesn't make and, any sense. And then sense. they're right back to Times Square because the last like two issues, they're all in Times Square. All right, oh, yeah. Agent, all right, let's talk about Agent Brand's quest aboard the Skrull ship is insanity. Well, she saves Reed Richards from that dick-sucking machine. But she, how does so. she kill 12,000 Skrulls just in a minute? She's a badass. She them all out. <laughs> yeah, she's unreal. a badass, and she lets them all out of a, an air, an, you know, an air dock, air airlock. So, well, and all she does of... is hang on to some controls as everyone's I getting know. sucked out of the ship. <laughs> Didn't even, like... Not like a, like, I'm going to, I have a harness on and I'm going to strap my, I'm just going to like click this ring on to this sturdy object and then hit the button. She just like hits the button and just holds on while all of them get sucked out. So I I have a bunch of notes on this issue. Also, I'm really mad like 50% of Reed isn't floating in space while the rest of them is in the ship. (sighs) Well, the dick sucking machine held him in Well, yeah, it's holding on to all the slack. So my notes for this issue was, so... Norman has this line. I know something. This might sound strange, and it is, but I know something about not sh- being sure if you're really pink or green. It's like an insane comment to make. Yeah, that was weird. Uh, that was a weird one. A crazy man. 
Well, also, pink is very Caucasian sounding. Like, what about everybody else? Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like, I mean, what? I think, you know, obviously he's talking about the Green Goblin and a pink white yeah. man, but it's just, it's an insane comment to make. He's an insane man. Oh, I thought he was talking about humans and scrolls. <laughs> well, he is, but he's also talking about Green Goblin and pink. I, I think he's saying, I know about being pink or green because I'm an insane man who thinks he's a goblin. <laughs> <I think he's laughs> That's true. That's what he's trying to say. We're also all, we're all like, pink on the inside, right? We're all I mean, pink. We're all pink and green. He's, he's like, I can relate all, because I think I'm a goblin, so he can relate. My my next note after that is, how the fuck did Bran get to the scrawl ship, and why is there no resistance? How many has she murdered? What is happening? My all of them. Comment. Yeah. Meanwhile, everyone's still in the savage land. They're still in the savage land. Oh, also, Maria Hill. Bobby. Maria Hill has been on this. She's been on this helicarrier with Jarvis for like for like issues. eight <laughs> issues. Yeah, and then when uh, it find when they're finally like Maria, we're gonna kill you. It she's like Nick Fury told me about life model decoys, which I by the way I hate so much. Yeah, it's just such Dude. a convenient plot bullshit thing to throw in. It's just I, like I guess what? It's not really me. Peace. And then everything blows up, and she's like flying away on a jetpack, and you're just like, what the fuck? Come on. Can we talk about shield uniforms? What, like, what, what do they program uh, what, what, these life model decoys with? Just like, hey, um, go out, talk to the bad guy with a certain amount of BS for, I don't know, five minutes. <laughs> While I blow everything up, like it doesn't make well, any fucking sense. Did. But I mean, I want to talk so about stupid. shield shield uniforms. What other branch of our government just has skin tight cat suit as the I uniform mean, that uh, you wear? It's it's form fitting, so they Does can. Does the IRS have, have, have you IRS seen auditors? how they can move? Have you, have you seen how they can move out? But I just it makes no sense. Like, do IRS auditors wear that? Do they just wear skin tight cat suits? No, but or, they don't fly like, around on helicarriers and uh, use jetpacks. You know, like it's fine. It makes sense. It's just fucking stupid. They're just hanging out with the superheroes all day. Like it makes sense. Uh, skin tight uniforms. Also, Reed, I get it. So read like violently attacking brand i mm -hmm. i found found a little unsettling like this is supposed to be a superhero and he just beats the shit out of a woman well he thinks she's a scroll because she's wearing green it's okay obvious. i just mean maybe we could write heroes who don't beat the crap out of a woman just because they suspect she's an alien uh, he doesn't beat the crap out of her he just life. chokes her out with his tentacle arms well, actually, talk, that is very hentai. I guess that's a super hentai scene to just yeah. show. I also don't understand weird. it, too, because, like, yeah. she she sucks all the scrolls out of the ship. She shuts down the machine that's currently ripping him to shreds or She's still sucking suspicious. his dick or whatever he's doing. She could still be a scroll, Joe. And then she says, Dr. Richards, my name is Abigail Brandt. I'm director of S.W.O.R.D. We're at the war with the Skrull Emperor, and I need you to... And then he just, like, wraps around her. I'll she kill you, scroll! Like... I guess he could. I guess she could. She could be. She could still be a scroll. This could just be, you know, their place. Why is it okay to murder chess. scrolls? Just because they're from another planet? It's all. It's all. Part Reed of wouldn't the kill the mole man. Why is he willing yeah, to I mean, strangle th this scroll lady? Going back to like how this all started, how the Illuminati invaded the scroll empire. They they uh, blew up like a giant ship with like I'd have to assume like tens of thousands of scrolls on it, like on a web. They just blow up this giant ship and they're like, we did it. Let's go home. We're the heroes oh, of this story. So dark. <laughs> oh, and then Captain Marvel shows up on there because people, it just, people fly all over the earth. It just in seconds for no fucking reason. Well, Captain Marvel could leave Thunderbolt Mountain and get to that scroll ship in a matter but of seconds. It, but it's still why? But why? Like what? So is this where his? Serve to... Yeah, is this where his journey ends? Captain Marvel scroll. Like I, I didn't understand so. if you only like I said I didn't read any of the tie-ins explaining his character. But if you only read the Secret Invasion eight issues. He has the most random part to play. He is, his part no is sense. to fuck up Thunderbolt Mountain, but then Norman Osborn's there and turns him around in his brain and he shoots back into space to fight the scrolls as the hero Captain Marvel because he so believes that he is Captain Marvel, even though he's a scroll, that he helps stop the invasion by going to blow up all their ships. Yeah. The, the key here is that more. none of that is elucidated very well at all. <laughs> and <laughs> And well, it's it also happens doesn't... in a matter of like yeah. half of a page, basically. It's two panels. So... Like that whole narrative is two panels of like, oh, it, that happened. Okay. 
Yeah, uh, it's just Bran and Reed on a ship going like, what's happening? And they're like, Captain Marvel's here! And then they escape, and then it's just like a one panel of a million ships blowing up while they like jettison away in a smaller ship. And then we're back to the savage. So mm. Thor mm? is in this. Why is Thor in the savage land? Is it Because they don't Thor know that it's Reed? not him. It's Skrull Thor, yeah. Yeah, it's a Skrull okay, Thor. that's Skrull Thor. Okay, good. Yeah, because Reed Richards shows up yeah. like five seconds Reed later and blasts the right. ground with his magic with gun that reveals yeah. Skrulls. And then they're all like, you're all scrolls. And, and the best part is that Mockingbird is a scroll at this point. And Hawkeye is like, it's oh, also, shit! And just blows them all away. It's uh, just super convenient that Reed just shows up with like, oh, here's a... He gun. arrived? Well, his, kind of his first is... His, well, he did. Him and, him and Bran shot down to the earth, directly where they needed to be, of course. But, I mean, and he has his magic scroll revealing gun. So he reveals all the scrolls, and that's the way to like rally all the heroes to go to the fight. That shouldn't be taking place because they should have been doing a secret invasion. And so, like back to our original point, I was on board with this storyline, <clears throat> like because I thought it was going somewhere. And when Reed showed up, and literally all of the people on the ship turned out to be scrolls, that's when I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be a flop. Like this is going nowhere." Yeah, well, this is the also, issue where I officially like was done with the storyline. Well, it's also this issue really elucidated that the Savage Land thing is just filler. It's just yeah. the Avengers out of New York for it's four just issues. Pull, yeah, it's just pulling them and off. Then, the board, and then yeah. we can get them back for the And then last we can pull them back with the magic with the magic with. scroll gun. Right. You know? Yeah, it's just a a diversion yeah. to fill four issues with nothing. And mm -hmm. then they get to go back and, and win. It's just Another one other comment I had that I laughed at was so they find out everybody is a scroll and they're like, we gotta go back to New York and fight there because it's not a secret invasion. It's a real invasion and we gotta fight them there. And Kazar makes some comment like, Oh, I want to go with them, but I should stay and help. And his wife's just like, No, just fucking go. We don't need you. And like I laughed at that. I just like tell his wife's I, like, I did like the you don't subtle... matter here, just go. <laughs> there there is some subtle so when they all get revealed as scrolls, there's there's some subtle things going on that I enjoy. A Mockingbird scroll is like, just tell me what's going on. This isn't like, she doesn't understand almost, it's almost like real. Like she really doesn't understand what's happening. Like I they think don't. she actually thought. Well, Cause they don't, yeah. they're they mind don't. And then like, they actually. And Jessica Jones yeah. scroll is like looking at her, it's just like staring at her hands. Like what in the, like genuinely confused that she's a scroll. Which is kind of leading back to the scene right before this with Captain Marvel going like, I'm going to go blow up all these ships because I'm so cap I'm so transformed into Captain Marvel that I'm going to act as Captain Marvel and go up into space and blow all these ships up. Some of that is actually kind of cool. I like the psychology yeah. behind that. But like none of it's really explored it's too nuanced and too fast for something that should be more explored and thought through. Yeah. yeah. And and again, we're never in these issues, the actual scroll technology and strategy is never explored. So we don't really know. Some of these people seem to not know their scrolls. Some do. Some, it's just, we don't get any explanation of it. It's just a mess. <laughs> It's a mess. Uh, the the whole fight after after Hawkeye blows the shit out of his wife that wasn't his real wife. The issue ends with him just saying, "This doesn't end till everyone last last one of them dies." You hear me? Every fucking last one. Of them. You're just like, God damn. He looks. That's what you want your superheroes. To very say, upset yeah. and angry. Yeah, and that's what we want our superheroes to say. Yeah, he's a role model. You think with him having to kill Mockingbird Scroll and being so mad that he's going to play some integral part in the end of the like? You, would you think, think something is going to happen, with Hawkeye, and then nothing happens. <laughs> nothing <laughs> happens. Yeah. All that happens is when Mockingbird does come out of that ship, he's like, "My real wife." Like, why would you think that at this point? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? On Earth. It'd be great if that. It'd be great if Reed Richards gun. That's what you're basing this on. All right, I want to talk about the cover of issue six because earlier in part one, I teased some comments I was going to make about new Captain America. Sure. So here, so first of all, in these eight issues, is it ever mentioned that this is Bucky Barnes? Not no. specifically. They do mention no. that it's not Steve Rogers, but yeah, I would have. Maybe it would have been helpful to let the reader know who this fucking person was. <laughs> Just FYI, Brian Michael Bendis would have been nice. You're, to let you're me know basing this the on the idea was. that they think you're only buying this book. 
Yeah. They're, the whole just, reason Marvel made this book is so you would buy all of the other books, in which case yeah. you would know that that's Bucky. Yeah. Uh, also, this is the era of like gritty Bucky Barnes, Captain America, where he loves handguns, which I think is pretty problematic given the state of America now, but whatever. Anyway, I want to talk about his costume. The Bucky Barnes cap costume has this like sharp V going. I mean, down it's to right next dip. to you, Al. I, we got we got it like right. Yeah, uh, it's right got there. the sharp V going down to his dick, but it makes right. him look thick. It makes him look like Starscream from Transformers One, who's just like this thick triangle of a creature. Oh, <laughs> and, Jesus! I thought you were talking about the cartoon. I was like, no, the move, the Michael Bay the movie, the Michael Bay movie. Yeah, Starscream no, I get it. I get it now. I get it now. Just a he's just a big triangle with little legs. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, yeah. But this is the Captain America costume has these weird proportions that make Bucky look like a real thick wide boy. I, he's it's not strange. I mean he's drawn like that sort of on that cover but so Alex Ross designed this costume which terrible not costume. the not the best idea yeah, in the world bad, to have I don't him like how the contours work on it's a the bad body at all. it's a bad yeah. costume it's the old school Captain America shield on his body on his abdomen and because the point goes so far down to his dick they have to split his belt in half so it doesn't interrupt the <laughs> The lines of the costume. Yeah, it's insane. It's <laughs> insane. And also, because it's Alex Ross, of course he made it shiny and metallic. Yeah, instead. why? Yeah, the is top it part metal? is metal. The top part is metal. It's yeah, all metallic. Again, no, it's it. just metallic spandex. <laughs> it's just shine, shiny spandex. But it's just nonsense. It's just no. Nonsense. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. I like. It's a terrible costume. And he, I just, but again, that that deep V makes his body proportion look strange. He looks like wide. I just don't understand. How do you buckle a belt that doesn't buckle in the belt? <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't. I think the belt. I think the does pouches it snap are onto just it. Built it snap? In, no, it's like a belt that doesn't costume. meet in the middle. It just meets on like your hips. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> it just that's ends what I mean. on your I think hips. It's, it's built into the costume. Yeah, but that makes no. All right. No, it doesn't make sense. It, I'm not saying it makes sense. I'm just saying that's what we have. It's built into the cup. So he's so he's got a he's got tights that have pouches built it like sewn into it. Built so when he's yeah, like, when he takes the costume off, it just crumples to the ground with a belt like attached to it still. Yeah, so when he, because like, pulls, it's not he's a like, real belt. He pulls it on. He's cinching it up. He has to zip it up the back because where else does it zip? Because there's nowhere. But unless it's metal. Unless <laughs> the bottom of the flag V. You fold up and then you bump oh. under it and you fold over the belt. Do you think he has like a full zipper down and around his crotch so like he can take a shit? How does it work? I think the bottom. How of does the Bucky Barnes back... in this costume go to the bathroom? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> well, it's gotta have a zipper. Do you think he has a wetsuit? Like he has the extra long zipper pull so he can like pull it up in the back. Like how does he get dressed? <laughs> doesn't doesn't make any fucking sense. It's a Maybe... seamless. Same he just costume. has a catheter that like spurts out of the sleeve, like the bottom leg sleeve. It just, just dribbles out, out the side of his holster down his leg. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right, anyway. I don't like this costume. I don't like Back to all, all the all Avengers are costume. friends now, even though they haven't been for however long since Civil War. And they're all in one ship going back because Reed shot the magic gun that revealed the scrolls. So they all semi trust each other. And they're all going back to New York too win the day this is oh another another quick thing because this issue has like a quick one panel of a tv shot of, of what's happening in wakanda mm, why yeah. so is black panther is in no way involved in anything happening in this no well he is part of the it's illuminati kinda... so <laughs> yeah but still you'd think has, I mean, it's just weird has, that uh... he has no role in this whatsoever I didn't read them, but he has tie-in issues. I guess the scrolls went after Wakanda because the vibranium there, maybe, but I don't know. Yeah, but, but it's yeah. still weird that he just has no role in the actual... He wasn't it's, prominent it wasn't big at yet. the time. Yeah. yeah, he wasn't big yet because well, we didn't care but also, about like, in This is just a really weird thing rereading this because like nothing really substantive happens in the main storyline like mm -hmm. all the all the story development happens in all the other fucking tie-in issues you have this is like a very weird general overview of like 
what's happening. Like it's like a, I don't know. I, it, yeah, it, it's a general it's overview. Strange. That's what it is. It's, and yet, at the same time, it still encompasses all the big story beats. So, like the tie-ins would only end in like, and then Marvel Boy arrives, right? And then yeah. like you would have Marvel Boy in this main book, like fly in and blow something up, and then like that's it. But you have to like have read all the tie-ins to make any of that make sense. All right, so then the Skrull Empress meets up with Hank Pym, Skrull, and some other Skrulls. And th so this is another thing that I just, we get the shot of the Avengers in the Skrull ship flying back from the Savage Land. And it's just like a cargo hold jam-packed with fucking heroes. And yeah, it's yeah. Just, and they're on their way to New York. None, of them, like, none of them have meaningful stories or roles. It's just 38 Avengers in a goddamn cargo hold. It, this is everything wrong with this comic. Yeah. It, it's just <laughs> overstuffed nothing. And, and they're flying to New York because they're going to have a giant battle in New York because that's how these things work. So a full, like... Issue and a half later, you get the panel of Thor coming in and like lightning coming down, and the ship of the of the scroll here. I mean, the heroes from the Savage Land is arriving, and it's just like Spider Woman going like, "Is that him?" And like Ares on the ship going like, "Aye, it's him." Like so, he knows right off the bat. And then also <laughs> he goes, "Who are you supposed to be?" And this is the only interaction between him and him and New Cap, Bucky Cap. Who do I look like? You wear the uniform of Captain America, a true friend of mine, the greatest Avenger, but you are not he. All he says is, weren't you dead? Like, what? <laughs> this dialogue <laughs> is the worst. Another dialogue point. So b, &B got famous for writing Ultimate Spider-Man. Spider-Man's jokes were all awful in this. Yeah. Like, all his quips were stupid and not You mean good. the parts where he's talking about going to, like, eat Denny's or something when they're on the ship heading back to New York? And yeah, they're like, it's all just, like, They're, like, Spider-Man, and he's like, oh, not the time? Yeah, that and it's weird, because, like, Bendis got famous writing Spider-Man, but in this, he's just a not... It's just, he doesn't get his voice right at all. And then we get one page of kind of an interesting look at protesters who are on the scroll side trying to welcome the aliens. And I mean, you know, these are things that might have been interesting if they were explored over multiple issues, but instead it's just, it's one page meant to convey the complexity of some humans welcoming aliens versus not. And it's just a waste of time. It's just a waste of time. It's crazy. It's crazy how much nothing happens in each issue. Like it's nothing. crazy. Yeah. It's yeah. literally just fighting, fighting. The fighting, end of this issue fighting. is two big splash. Oh, well, so we get one page of like the scroll queen assembling her like scroll army of fake scroll heroes. And then one giant two page splash page of a symbol said by Iron Man while like all the heroes are there. And then the next page is literally just more of that. The, them fighting. It's just like smashing them together. I, I mean, it's a fun fight page. And those splash pages are fun to draw and fun to see. But like nothing's happening. It's just insanity. We also, Thor and Captain America arrived two issues ago. And then they're re-arriving now. And yeah. have Yes, that's now. the part. That's what I'm saying. Like the, it doesn't it's make any stupid. sense. It's stupid. Yeah, it's just stupid. This is this is what I was talking about with Vision earlier. Vision's face is like healing, or it's but that's shattered. Not vision, right? Is that Junior Vision from Young, or is that Real Vision? No, it's Real that's Vision a, from. Well, it's it's Young Avengers Vision, but it's also Real Vision. It's the only it's Vision. Yeah, it's real vision. vision. Okay. Yeah. This is another thing that when I mentioned I don't understand scrolls, some of them are heroes, some of them aren't. They're all That's what I'm saying. Powered. Like, why didn't they all take the form of humans during that fight? I, I, it was no one so would have made that fight so confusing slash interesting, but also confusing, but also amazing would just be like if her army looked just like them. <laughs> like, That's what I'm saying. They, they would have been like, wait, who am I fighting? Because it would still have created the confusion, even with their giant invasion yes. force. It still would have kept the confusion going. And I'm like, why? Why are you the Hulk, but with pointy ears? We all know you're the scroll <laughs> one. <laughs> like, what? Do you, all you have to do is not have pointy ears, and we'd be like, "Is that the Hulk?" I don't it's know. Just, it's just crazy. And then, so we have this 
showdown building. So we have like all these, this melange of weird scrolls, and then they're fighting Mighty Avengers, New Avengers, Young Avengers, Nick Fury, Thunderbolts. Mm-hmm. Like it's just mm-hmm. what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> Like, I don't know. It's just a mess. And the last two panels are just millions of heroes. It's just this, oh, I can't handle this. I cannot handle it. It's just millions <laughs> of heroes. We haven't, we haven't like touched Avengers on this at all. <laughs> Again, it's just meaningless. We haven't touched on this at all, but like, what do you guys There's think about this? There's a Galactus scroll. Look at that. What do you, <laughs> sh- don't, don't. What do you guys think Joe. about these weird human Photoshop things with the scrolls at the end of every issue? <laughs> do you remember? I didn't, these? I didn't have those in mind. <laughs> it's at the end of every issue. It's like a weird, like, I'm a little girl, but my mom's a scroll. Like, and it's just like every one ends in that. It's so weird. I think crazy. it's a, I think it's a beautiful display of what. Oh, and they all say embrace change. What our life could be. Uh, I want to go back to this. It's a fucking Galactus scroll. Well, no, it's really Galactus, obviously. Why is there gonna, a Galactus And the heroes are going to think not, that. But he's not as big as Galactus. He's just... He's as like, big as Galactus, and he has... He doesn't have green skin, and he doesn't have pointy ears no, sticking out of his weird helmet. He's, it's he's clearly Galactus, giant, man. and it's going to trick him. Al, you're so... Joe, cool. you're so it wrong. is a scroll who looks like a scroll is the size of giant man and is no, wearing no, no. Galactus. It's clearly costume. Galactus and it's going to fool all the heroes. Just, just wait. What are, what are you'll we doing? See their plan is going to come to fruition. <laughs> oh, I, you'll see. Issue seven. We're almost done. <laughs> issue seven. Okay. Look at the first panel of issue seven. Yeah. yeah. It's the same yeah. panel I that mean, ended Jesus issue six. Christ. Well, I mean, the big fight's happening. You got to cut back to that. Joe. Sure. That's the establishing shot. It's been a month, Al. We haven't read this for a month. You have to have the establishing shot of like, this is where everybody is. They're all fighting all at once. Like, that's what we're doing. This is pornography. It is. There is no story or narrative purpose. This is just pornography of superheroes in action. Like, this is all this is. You know, it's funny because like... No, so all right. So on that note, the this is what the difference is between like the Ultimates or the Ultimates Two that does these giant splash pages. Like shit is happening in those. It's not just like this crazy like fuck pit of all these heroes and villains fighting each other. Like Hitch went out of his way to draw like Quicksilver moving throughout the entire panel. So there was like a thread to follow throughout this giant fight and like see him doing things and like Thor's doing a specific thing or going after a specific person. And like the fight, even those eight page spreads that he did or one of one or two, but like, you know, like even those in giant fight scenes that you get in a comic, like the ultimates wasn't just like insanity everywhere of just like bodies thrown in and out of the screen like it was thought out planned fight scenes of like people doing a certain amount of things people would be in certain pockets fighting and then you'd zoom in on that moment and go oh captain america's fighting this uh like the or what you know like whatever they call them but like it's just you know what i mean like it made sense like there was like is as much as it was like a pornography of fight scene it was also showing moments within that giant page spread to make the fight make sense and also show the scale of it. This is not Not showing scale so much as just like a shit show and everything's going crazy all over the place. And the next panel where you see Captain America, for instance, doesn't correlate with like where you just saw him or anything that's going on. It's just like the next thing. The other thing I love about this is they label everybody like Iron Man, Captain America, the Wasp. Like someone reading Secret Invasion Seven doesn't know who the fuck Captain America is. Like Every Marvel comic, Al, don't you know doing? this? Every Marvel comic is someone's first comic. What are we doing? It's just insane. It's a Stan, like, it's a Stan Lee rule. <laughs> Secret Invasion Number Seven. We're gonna label Thor, just so you know who Thor is. Like. What are we doing? Oh, this is this is something that I this is something that made no sense to me. 
that I was kind of saying earlier. So let me just show up. The, let me just show this full page. There's a scene where Wasp is flying towards Hank Pym, scroll Hank Pym. Yeah, I and guess. she covers his butt. Are you talking about when her butt covers his butt? Uh, no, uh, yeah. it's this scene right here. So she's flying towards him, and he's at normal size, and I guess he grows. But like, just this panel at the middle at the bottom is just a close up of his emblem. So, and she's already wasp size. So like, there's nothing to indicate there that it's not normal sized Hank Pym. Yeah. Even when it shows the next panel, which is just a shot of his crotch with her like underneath his crotch. Like she again, she's still yes, wasp size. Like no, none of that makes none of that translates to. Hank Pym grew big suddenly. Like, you know what right. I mean? Until you get to the next page, I guess. And then also now he's a scroll face. Yeah, but it's no, just like, it, uh, one, there's so many of those moments that are like inexplicable where like something's quote unquote happening. And I'm like, what am I looking at? I'm just a, a shot of the emblem on his chest. And there's like, Sh shooty stretch marks around it I, like and i'm supposed well, to i want to talk about this because in avengers not the forever, best panels we, well in avengers forever we spent a lot of time talking about what great shape hank pym is in and i'm gonna bring up in this <laughs> yeah. one because specifically his patrick's, legs well i want to talk about patrick's view on this in this top right panel the wasp flies above hank and like puts her ass in yes. the Over foreground in front <laughs> yeah. of his ass, like to block yeah. you from seeing yeah, because the viewer doesn't want to see Hank's ass. Yeah, why not? We've seen it. No, it's flat, forever. it's boring. It's why good. can't we see his ass? We do get to see his crotch, and there no there's nothing there. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a doll. There in the he's a Ken doll. He's a Ken doll. I don't know if you know that, but it's not really Hank Pym because he's well endowed. Uh, that's a scroll, Hank, and we I don't guess. know. I just I don't know. We don't I don't know. Know. Maybe I they don't like, know what human men anatomy looks down there, looks down there, you know? I just I'm not sure what Janet was trying to do by <clears throat> waving her ass in front of Hanks, but I feel I cheated. Know. I feel cheated out of seeing Hanks, but uh but then Hank turns giant, and when he turns giant, he gets a scroll. Why turn into a scroll when you're giant? Because they know he's a scroll know. at that point. So he's like, I'm done hiding, I'm a scroll. Which, by the way, uh, Bullseye like blasts him in the eye five seconds later. Yeah, and he's he, dead. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah. Bullseye. I was like, who shoots him in the eye? Oh, no, it's, it's, it's the page. Yeah, it's the page like before. A bazooka, yeah, but yeah. the page a bazooka before, sniper rifle or something. The page before is Bullseye pointing the rifle, the rifle scope, and it's focused on Spider Man. Yeah, it is. Because, <laughs> of course, it is. I think it's the I think it's the idea of like, well, I could kill a hero. All right, fine, I'll fight. I'll fight for the humans. Yeah, I think That's it's a, whole, a bait and switch. You know, like, yeah, yeah, I think it's a bait and switch of like, oh, look at him, look at a superhero, but then no, he I does see. shoot. But yeah, he, shoot, he shoots. Yeah. Well, yeah. again, like the they're not doing a great job storytelling of what's going on in this fight with nope. the artwork because I was like, who just blew up Hank's eye in the next panel? It just like, if you don't realize Bullseye's the one shooting him, it just looks like his eye randomly explodes. <laughs> yeah, no. It, yeah, which doesn't, because it, it does sort of look like that. There is a there is a fun again. Reed Richards kind of has his head fucked with. There is a kind of a cool again. This is sort of the point of me and Patty have been saying this entire time. There's a panel where like a bunch of scrolls just look like R Sue Richards in like various costumes and various times in her life, and like all attack Reed all at the same time. And they're all like, "Hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie." And they're all like punching him and pulling him and attacking him. Why isn't that the move the whole fucking exactly <laughs> do that, but to every hero <laughs> the whole time? Yeah, but I mean, uh, but that was a cool little tidbit. And then Again, we get not done well I, enough. I guess it's supposed to be funny, but so we get comments from Spider Man about how it's not a big deal because the Watcher isn't here, who shows up and then has no role at all. Yeah, in, no, in but his, it, him being there means it's important. So it's just, it's just a punchline. Okay. It's, yeah. yeah, it's literally just a punchline. And then, so Jarvis, when, who last we saw getting blown up in a helicopter. Or another one. It, or another one. Or another. I guess it's another one. No, it's meant to yeah. be the same one. And so. Yeah, so somehow he survived a, Maria Hill blowing up that helicarrier and escaping, right? And then, yeah, I Jessica guess, Jones yeah. gives him the baby. The baby. And then she flies. I mean, I need to get out there and fight. But she doesn't. She doesn't do anything. 
in this. Like that's what I'm out saying. Fights. Like, terrible judgment call on her part. Like of all the times. To yeah, you don't. Mother, yeah, there is because there's been mold. So again, not in this comic book, but before this, <laughs> in Secret Adventures, there's been multiple times when Luke Cage is like, "Hey, we need you," and she's like, "Dummy." we have a baby now. I'm not, I'm done with the yeah, superhero yeah. thing. I'm not going out there to fight. That's your call. I'm with you and I will be with you, but I'm going to keep this baby safe. That's like my main goal right now is to always be with this baby and make sure it's safe. And all this shit's happening and every hero on the planet that is out there. And then this moment in time, she's like, Hey, we can't trust the guy next to us at all right now, but you're, you're cool. Right? Jarvis. See you later. Like, what yeah. the fuck? Of all moments, you can't trust the human being standing next to you. Now you're going to do it. Yeah. You would have been better uh, also, off fuck, fuck, having a fucking baby strapped to your chest and going out there and fighting. It's yeah, that would have been safer. Uh, another, another just exhibit Z in the boob index. So Kate Bishop is what, 16? God. There she is. There you go. So bad. It's so it's bad. ridiculous, Al. She's at least 19 or 20. <laughs> okay, great. She's 19. I just mean it's this is such a horny thing. And then yeah, so Wolverine is fighting Spider-Woman, and then Hawkeye shoots her through the jaw, and then Norman Osborne shoots her in the face. Something that's strange to me is their immediate trust of Bucky Barnes as Captain America. Because aside from the magical reed gun, which hasn't gone off in quite a while, there's no way to know that that's they know it's not Steve Rogers. Like they're aware it's just some guy in a Captain America costume. But for some reason, yeah. they're all just fighting alongside of him. Like nothing's going on. Like all of this the shit power is happening. Of the shield. It's a symbol. That makes Joe, no fucking symbol. sense. <laughs> it makes all the sense of the world, Joe. If you loved your country, this would make sense. Is it because Thor was like, you're not him? And that's it. And they're like, oh, well, it's not Steve, but should trust this random that we don't know Joe. who it is under the mask. Joe, it's just, it's that red, white, and blue draped over that triangular body. I mean, have you star seen screen, triangle that deep body, V? And that's all they need. Oh, another thing I want to talk about. Sorry, before we get to Jessica Drew getting her head blown off. So they make a big deal about, oh, if, if Janet Van Dyne is with the Avengers, we're fine. And then we, because I don't know why. You, you don't know why at the time, but the scrolls make Well, because the WAPS like, has worry. always been there. And then at a certain point, Janet starts growing giant and glowing like she's going to blow up or something. And then she just does it and nothing happens. And mm -hmm. I, none of it made any sense. Mm -hmm. right. Well, what I thought was really strange is because we're into secret invasion eight, the finale. I just thought issue eight, I thought it was weird that in issue eight, the narration starts in the past tense. It's two people talking. You don't know who it is. And they're talking about the battle being over and how it ended. And it's like, what a weird way to shift yeah like, like perspective in the last issue we went from season. present like, tense to what's going on so yeah i don't know this series is just i don't have much to say i mean it's just been a big fight they've just been fighting. also we haven't discussed at all like the tiny weird tidbit of like the scrolls talking about he loves you and like it's just like yeah, this weird they, god it allegory because it doesn't guess, matter god yeah. i mean so our god though i don't know it's i don't god. think so I mean, it's their god obviously <laughs> uh, apparently they're a religious uh, they're one in the same empire. <laughs> they're one in the same well there guys. is of course there's only one god of course but no yeah, so, so at I the guess... end of seven though hawkeye does shoot spider woman through the head through the, yeah, through the cheek but it doesn't kill her i guess yeah uh, and so in A, right, so Janet looks like she's about to explode, and then Thor just makes a tornado, and then that's it. Yeah, it's like, I don't yeah. understand what that's happened. It. I think, does I Thor she... just contain it, and, like, she, like, does he, like, teleport her away the with the hammer, and right. she blows up somewhere else? Because she's dead after this, right? Yeah, they, she's they for talk a about her as if she died. So yeah, she's dead for a minute. Yeah, I don't know. He spins the hammer really fast, and the tornado. Well, starts. that's. I mean, so yeah, he teleports her away, which is to save I don't the think earth. He teleports her. Away. I think he like. Of course he does. That's what he's doing. The energy out. No, he's something. using Mjolnir to fucking like 
you know, do the shit that he did in the Ultimates, where he's like, uh, "Oh, Joe, there's a bomb. I'm gonna, I'm could, gonna transport it somewhere else." Time out, time out. I'm gonna do a Moira McTaggart test on Joe. Joe. Oh, Moira McTaggart. M J O L N I R. Pronounce that. Mjolnir. M J O L N I R. Pronounce. Yeah, Mjolnir. <laughs> Joe, there's a gun to your head. Pronounced. Pronounce M J O L N I R. Uh, all right, sorry. M. Mjolnir. Jesus, <laughs> it's, it's Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Oh, near? Oh, that's what you're mad about? The near part? You're Mjolnir. replacing the I Mjolnir. and the O. You're saying Mjolnir. It's Mjolnir. Oh, oh, Mjolnir. 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 What's Meow Meow? Little, little, <laughs> that was the uh, best. Patrick. That was the best Patrick. part of Thor when the stupid assistant, he's like, I need Mjolnir. Well, I can't say it. Meow near? Meow meow. And she goes, she goes, meow. meow. She goes, meow meow. What's meow meow? <laughs> <laughs> it's meow meow. Oh, uh, oh, Patrick, what's what's Miss McTaggart's first name? Moira. You got it on the first try. Patrick, you got it on the first try. Oh, Moira McTaggart. Be proud of yourself. Uh, yeah, so Janet's thing makes just no sense. It honestly could be either or. It, it could be either or. The art's ambiguous. He could be teleporting her away, or he could just be like siphoning her energy into space, just like, like funneling out. Like, yeah, I don't. You can't. That's, you can't that's the problem. Happening. That that's kind of what I'm talking about. There's so many panels of his art where he's like doing something, but nothing's really being shown. It's kind of one of those moments as a writer, I'm sure Bendis is like, and then he does this and he's like, got it. I'll draw that. And then when he draws it, it's just like not hitting the right moments. Yeah. So like when you're, what you're seeing and what's left to be the visual aspect of that isn't translating. So what we get isn't an explanation at all. Like it's, it's very empty and just like, there's a swirling hammer. There's, there's dots everywhere. She slowly fades away. Did she explode? I don't know. Does she, did he teleport her somewhere? Like, again, it's it not none of it makes any sense. So then after that, the Empress Spider Woman kind of stumbles in front of the Avengers, and there's a panel that I could spend 45 minutes on. So it's all the Avengers just pointing fingers at her. And I have a lot of thoughts about. So first of all, front and center is Wolverine. Mm -hmm. The fuck is Wolverine in charge? But okay. He's just the uh, one that's then, most likely to stab her and not care. All right, Although whatever. they've all said very many times and already demonstrated throughout this book that they're willing to murder any scroll without any problem whatsoever. Yeah. I also so I understand like why how, uh, he's the one that's like, I'll do it. I'm Wolverine. And I'm just like, every one of them will do it. Hawkeye will all, do it. I mean, they've <laughs> all they've been for the past two issues. They've just been murdering scrolls. Yeah, right just been nonstop murder. There's also prominently featured in this Daredevil, who hasn't been in a single panel of this whole comic. It's just like randomly just there. there. Yeah, he's just there. Suddenly. Well, it's a battle. It's New York. Suddenly, got to be. He's got to be there on one panel. Just at some okay. point, Tony puts on super old armor. By the way, to like. Yeah, because he has to get fighting. out of his new one to get rid of the virus or whatever. Just boring. Just uh, boring. And then, like, the, and then, there's so many different ways to have taken Tony has to, like has a virus and all his all his systems everywhere, defense systems, including Shield, because he's head of Shield at this point. All of this stuff like shuts down, and like there's there'd be such a good storyline of Tony, like having a backup backup plan or something like being Tony that he is like having like the futurist version of like, I have this in store. I have this in store that no one knows about that's cut off from everything. And just coming out with like a really badass suit of armor or something, doing something really fun and cool. And like, none of that happens. Just, I got this old V one <laughs> Mark, Mark one armor. I'm going to, I'm going to fight in it now. Well, it's just, it's just a plot device to get him out of the way. I don't I just they just didn't want him. Yeah, but this is the part where you bring him back in like a big way, like a big fun no. splash of like, hey, no. Iron Man He's comic book get... from this point forward is gonna be very different and cool. And here's the launching point. And they just didn't do that. There's but so many not, like moments of like of the way. you could do this and this and this, and like yeah, didn't happen. But he's about to go to jail or whatever for being a negligent shield. I yeah, because he let this happen. He did. <laughs> he did. He, he, he was did. on watch. Yeah, 
He did. He fucked up big time. And I did enjoy because I really hated Tony after Civil War. And when Thor is like, this is all your fault. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah. Uh, all right. Right. So then Norman shoots Jessica Drew Empress in the face. And that's the end. Thor and Tony destroy countless of other ships with, I mean, well, and, just, other, and other heroes. Scroll bodies dead in space. Like these are our heroes. Just <laughs> murdering. It's just murdering. Murdering thousands of I scrolls. think I think the Ultimate Comics really like fucked up the regular Marvel Universe. I think it like yeah, tainted yeah. everything that they stood for as heroes, and like they were just like, oh, let's let's have our, mur- our heroes murder an alien race. Yeah, because they they have to be like gritty and real. Yeah, because they again, uh, we got to make it like Marvel Ultimates. Like we gotta we gotta go hard and fast and fucking yeah, I, blow I shit up. I understand that. Um, obviously, the scrolls were aggressors. I get that, but these are still. Well, I just mean they're supposed to say these are superheroes who are supposed to be concerned with protecting human lives, and but but they're just again thousands of bodies just floating in space. Yeah, wouldn't From you like Thor just murder if you just killed the queen? Like, it's very possible that you could be like, "Hey, you're all prisoners of war now. We're gonna like take you somewhere. You can live there, or whatever, or or like just." There's a lot of solutions there that don't involve, "Hey, we we won on the planet. Now let's fly into space and murder the and rest. Murder of them. and just murder <laughs> like, all just, of them. There's yeah, a lot of scenarios there that could have been happening. It's insane. And Tony and th- this is. Like, I can't stress this enough. Like, it's sociopathic. Tony and Thor are chatting to each other as they're murdering all these scrolls. <laughs> like, it, it's like they're sweeping up, you know, dust under the rug or something. To them, like I mean, Tony not... literally says, "Come on, guys, keep the casualties light." As in, like they're going insane, <laughs> just murdering too many people. <laughs> he's like, I, it's but he's crazy. not like keep the casualties light. This is a this is a race, a species of alien that, like, you know, like why would we kill all of them? And he goes, "I want prisoners." He doesn't it's say. Just... He doesn't say like, "Hey, this is wrong. We shouldn't just eradicate every last one of them." He just says. Hey, just make sure you don't kill them all. I want a few of them. These for are prisoners. again. I don't. I know I'm saying the same thing over and over because like my mind can't comprehend this. These are Earth's mightiest heroes, slaughtering tens of thousands <laughs> of aliens and just chatting to each other like they're they're on a coffee break at work. As uh, they're well, doing. I mean, Al, they killed Wasp. They killed like it's one insane. hero. It right? is <laughs> like insane. one. I think like one person died. So they're I pretty mean, you, pissed. I'm, I, you have to give them credit. They're like the scrolls didn't kill all the people they replaced. They just kidnapped yes. them. Because <laughs> let's get to that. The ship opens <laughs> up. <laughs> and everybody I mean, guys, just walks off like everything's fine, including Dum Dum Dugan, who got his guts ripped out. <laughs> I'm still stuck. Just, if, if you took out a scale, and on one scale you're like, put who the scrolls killed in their Earth invasion, and on the other scale, put the scrolls we killed. I mean, there's it's, like oh two my people God, astronomically. on the scroll scale. There's maybe two people. <laughs> astronomically different. It's insane. The disproportionate response is it's just horrifying. It is oh, horrifying. And the, the, one of the people that fucks and fucking walks off the ship is goddamn Jarvis. <laughs> <laughs> like this is like what like uh, of anybody that could have just died and been expendable as a Marvel Universe character. By the way, that's the best thing MCU ever did was make Jarvis a fucking AI in Tony's yeah. helmet. Anyway, anyway but, but like of all the people to fucking murder and not care, Dum Dum Dugan, how is that guy even still alive? He's not Captain uh, America. I don't get it. He fought with him in World War Two. What what's the point there? I don't even understand. And then also like Jarvis is just like what the fuck. And then the well, Jarvis also, thing is like Jessica Jones sees Jarvis walk off the ship and she's like, oh, fuck my baby. And you're like, yeah. really? Well, the other thing that just defies belief. So they find this spaceship chocked full of Marvel heroes. They yeah. couldn't break out. No, they were, uh, you know, like a, Sue Storm, Spider-Woman. No. Uh, that, would, Electric, that wouldn't make any sense. I love how Spider-Woman is just like, hey, uh, what's up? 
<laughs> What's up, everybody? What's up? It's the best line in all of Marvel Comics. Oh, hey, uh, hey, what's up? What's up? <laughs> also, Hank but Pym is right front and center in his yellow jacket front uniform. Center. Get He's him out of here. He's a hero. Get him out of here. But uh, again, you've got a hundred a-list marvel heroes on a ship they can't i mean a lot of them just look like shield agents there's not even that many of them that, that were captured i don't understand that's so stupid and hank says where's janet <laughs> like he immediately notices hey where's janet yeah where's ja i'm looking for someone to abuse where's janet yeah piece of shit. <laughs> I know. What a piece of shit. well the panel where iron man just throws his arm around hank Pym and goes oh my boy hank good to have you back like hank is an awful why? human why is it good to have him back also, you don't know how long he's been gone. <laughs> like, at the very least, you'd be like, when did we last talk? Like, it's not like, you know, it's not like, uh, I'm really glad you're here. I get that part. But, like, it, the the second question immediately would be like, how long have you been gone? <laughs> I just want to I just want to know how much of what I've been dealing with isn't real. And then so Jessica reveal... Jones freaks out and goes and realizes her yeah, baby's baby. been stolen. The yeah. baby. They took the yeah. baby. Oh, and then the uh, Franklin Richards and um, John oh, yeah. thing are safe. Yeah, everyone's gives safe. Gives shit about them, but they're safe. Yeah, again, everyone's safe. Like it's just like nothing, nothing came changed of this. Uh, at all. It was, it, but we right. So this is the scene where Thor is like, "Hey, fuck you, Tony." Yeah. <laughs> I did, I did yeah. kind of like. Yeah. What um, did you think about oh, Young Avengers? summing up with like the little i know about my heritage is that the scroll empire stands for this was extremism this was terrorism i don't understand why they went to earth what why they want earth so badly didn't they say they have a dozen planets they do and that's when the only part in this entire story arc some random scroll is like we don't tragedy has decimated our people our planets no longer exist our faith was our last chance this was our last chance yeah, Our last chance of what? Explanation you get. Murdering humans? But you didn't. You just it came didn't. and said, hey, we want to hang out. I with don't you. think they did. I think they literally just like wanted to get us free health care yeah. and like, so live, <laughs> like coexist with us. <laughs> I mean, they... so The only they obstacle don't... to bliss on Earth is all these asshole heroes that yeah. just murder all of our brothers I mean, and I sisters. At the end of these eight issues, the scroll body count is Janet Van Dyne. Uh, yeah. Right? I think that's I think pretty so. much it. Yeah. Well, I mean, Al, they did trick us. They did trick us. That was Yeah, and cool that's irreconcilable. That was I don't not like, I don't even know how I feel about it. Not I still don't. And then so my other big complaint is so coming out of this because Tony fucked up <laughs> The U.S. government thinks it's a good idea to put Norman Osborn in charge of everything. Well, he killed a scroll queen, so yeah. So that's yeah. right. But then the thing that I hate is this kind of shit where we don't get any level of suspense of like, is Norman reformed? Is he evil? Let's rest on that for a minute because we're immediately in the same issue. Told no, he's still evil. Yeah, he's Here. sitting around a table with Doctor Doom, the White Queen, Namor, who was on the Illuminati. <laughs> Yeah. The hood, uh, Lady Loki. Lady well, Loki's Loki, but and... she, he's currently a woman. Thank you for meeting with me. Okay, it's a new day, so listen carefully. This is how it's going to be. And you're so again, I, yes and no, Al. I would say this is more like the new Illuminati, which were already filled with shit bags. It's not like it's that different from the last Illuminati. It's just like this one is comprised of mostly villains. But Namor was there too, which is also yeah, half fifty percent villain. I mean, guys, I just I don't know. I would have liked some level of suspense and like let's carry this plot line out over time. And so he doesn't have time for that. It's the breakneck pace of the Marvel universe at this point. You got to get ready for the next crossover event. It's happening I in guess. twelve months. This already took eight issues. We only have four months before the next event happens. That's why it's well, ridiculous. Like we're Keep immediately to Nor we're immediately to Norman just being manipulative again, immediately. Like there's no we but don't I mean, even also, get also this kickstarts this kickstarts dark rain like they call dark it rain. dark dark rain. rain. Yeah. So like I think that's a pretty big indicator that Norman probably isn't reformed. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I, I, I think <laughs> also if the we all was that Norman was a good guy, I don't think it would yeah. be called dark rain. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's the key. This has been building in all of the Thunderbolts and like everything that's been going on with Norman Osborn for years at this point. So like it's really just like, hey, my luck worked in my direction this time, and now I'm in charge. Let's you know, the villains are in charge. But that's that's what happens at the end of this. Yeah, I, I just I would have liked some level of kind of mystery and like, oh, well, maybe he is reformed. But and I understand that also even preceding this. Well, so again, like reading Thunderbolts, you know, that's not the case. Like, this, yeah, you know, that's not I a know, surprise. In Thunderbolts, yeah. I know in the Ellis run, he was like pretty immediately still half goblin and crazy. But, you know, I don't know. I just I guess I'm an idiot. For so again, the ramifications of this storyline as we keep we keep harping on aren't big enough number one and number two it's basically spider woman isn't trusted after this for some inexplicable reason because you would trust everyone else that was a scroll yeah but her so she has personal ramifications of this afterwards mockingbird's back for whatever reason and then basically and wasp is dead and also Norman's in and Tony's out. Those are the big things that came from this story arc. It did kickstart Dark Reign, which was a fun time in Marvel Comics from my recollection. But like, yeah. maybe maybe I'm wrong at this point. I don't know. I mean, yeah. like, like this story arc was so like, again, I mean, if you're like Patty and you had read reread all the tie-ins, I think great. But I mean, just rereading Secret Invasion. It's not, just, not, oh, not this, good. Do you hear that like buzzing noise in your? No, what is it? Is it just my head hits? I Does think this pass the Bechdel test? The Bechdel <laughs> test? The Bechdel test? Does this pass the Bechdel test? The answer's probably, probably no. no. Uh, this is a no. I don't. I can't recall. It's a giant no. To yeah. Talk about anything. This is. Just I don't a no. know. Just a straight no. And I don't. Also, I mean, there might be something if I really dug deep, but I didn't. No, there was like They're barely basically... any dialogue in the eight issues at all. Yeah, like, it's, like yeah, the dialogue right. is I mean, right. male, shit. It's male just or fighting. female. There's no dialogue. Yeah, but yeah, it's but just. Certainly... Uh... I mean, the comparisons to Avengers Forever are kind of astonishing because it literally is just like <laughs> keep fighting, keep yeah. fighting. Oh, at least well, they didn't say it. that. At least they didn't say that. At least yeah, there was no dialogue of like keep, keep holding them back, keep fighting, and it's just like another panel of more fighting, and you're like, what? They're not doing anything. Yeah. But that's why I brought it up because it just again it reminded me of Avengers Forever. It's just this forever battle. The last four issues are this melee battle of nonsense. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> this so the very back of this book is a like an ad for this book who do you trust the shape-shifting alien race known as the scrolls has secretly infiltrated every superpower organization on earth with one goal full-scale invasion now the invasion is here the marvel universe is in shambles the scrolls empire pl <laughs> empire's plan has birthed itself into perfection it is hero versus hero didn't happen resurrections and reunions one person is tony stark a scroll question mark Page after page unveils reveal after reveal. <laughs> shocking moment after shocking moment. It's so bad. I think that's why it was so disappointing because I do I do remember none of Marvel that really hyping this up <laughs> yes. as if it was going to be like changing change. continuity. Yeah. Brian Bendis Expect and Lanil Yu leap off the pages of this mega hit New Avengers and deliver a story that will forever alter the Marvel universe. Expect change. Be disappointed change. is the <sighs> subscript of that. And again, I know we talked about this already, but one of my like biggest complaints is is just the scrolls are not anything. They're I know we mentioned like he loves you. Apparently they're religious. They talk about we, their just, prophecies and stuff coming true and too. Like none of this like but we get no, weird like propaganda or like character. shit on their end like matters or goes anywhere. It's just like no, shit they say. Any, we don't get any yeah. view into into what's driving them or, or the specific characters. They're just we do. It's very quick. It's really at the very end. Boogie Ben the fight. Hulk Lang is talking to a scroll, yeah. and he says, there we go. "Our planets are gone. Yeah. <laughs> this right. is our last That's hope. Joke. You're it's right. the very last right. last pages it. of the entire arc. I missed it. <laughs> it's clearly there, there, Al. A lot of depth there that yeah was explored. 
Anyway, if my uh, overall take wasn't uh, described in what I was just saying two minutes ago, um, do not like this arc. It's bad. So you yeah. don't recommend it. I do not recommend Secret Invasion. If you want to read all of Secret Invasion, which is including every single Marvel comic book that interacted with it during the time period, perhaps that's a good story. I, I did not reread all of that. So there's a very good chance that a lot of this makes more sense with the context of the tie-in books as we've been berating as a point this entire time. But Secret Invasion as a whole, a crossover event, storyline, very bad. Not well written. No repercussions come from this other than just like a random character comes back to life and a random character dies. And like, that's kind of it. I agree. I don't recommend it. I I just, even if you read the whole thing in the tie-ins, I just still don't recommend I just don't think it's really an interesting story. It was an intriguing era of Marvel during the time. But I, again, it's I think over... it's because it's across all the books. And it has nothing know. to do with this that, crossover event. I think this era of Marvel is just an <laughs> overstuffed just insane mishmash of nothing. I'm not a fan. <laughs> uh, gotcha. And even, I know we didn't, it's weird because we usually spend a lot of time talking about art and the visual part of the comic mm -hmm. book. And this episode, we, we didn't. And mm -mm. I, another aspect of this I want to bring up is I just think visually, this isn't really, I wouldn't recommend it for that either. I just don't think it's aesthetically. It's not like, it's not really horrible art though. Like I didn't like turn every page and be like, oh, I have to keep reading that. Like, like the art was decent at the time. Like it, it was, it was what it is what it is. Like it was, it's very of its time. So it's very giant muscles and giant tits everywhere, which is whatever. It's it, that is what it is. But man, I kind of have better memories of Lanil Yu's art. Patty kind of mentioned it earlier. I'm neither here nor there on the art. That's kind of how I feel about it. It's just like I'm like, yeah. eh, it wasn't bad. It's not great. Yeah, I also. Don't recommend reading this. And like I said it earlier, I really loved Bendis' run on New Avengers. And I think Norman Osborn takes over and it starts Dark Reign and he writes Dark Avengers. And it's like Norman running a team of like supervillains disguised as heroes. And I thought that was really good. So like I do recommend Bendis' run on New Avengers. But I, I mean, I remember being very disappointed with this storyline when it finished, when it first came out. But rereading it, it's like it's astonishing how little story development, plot, anything happens in these main eight issues. And like it's 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 crazy. You, it, uh, it, it's a waste <laughs> of time. Don't I, I actually thought we were going to have more fun kind of revisiting it. I thought it would be bad and like fun. I kind of did too. I was like, sure. It's I, not yeah. even um, it's no, not it's just bad, bad. Yeah, there's like not, not even a lot of bad, substance. Bad, bad. There's not even a lot of substance to even talk about. I feel like we've been talking a lot, but it's like we've been harping on the same. Just like there's a lack of any type of spine in this in these eight issues. It, it, it's mm -hmm. it's I don't know what happened. Again, it's here. the reason it's, Al stopped reading comics. It's the reason crossover <laughs> events started to suck. It's like it's yeah. it's the perfect example of what a bad crossover event is. And it had so much promise. Like it could yes, have been. Yes, that's the awesome. bad part about it. It and had it all this like intrigue wanted. and interest in it, leading to it, and even involved in it. And then you get you get on the other side, and you're just like, so nothing came of that. No, fucking nothing. It would have been so great if they had just taken one prominent Marvel character and been like, yeah, they've been a scroll for a long time long and you'd be like time. what yeah. and like all the ramifications of that storyline unraveling would have been phenomenal and it, they could have chosen almost anyone at random like you just randomly said sue storm earlier patty like that would have yeah. been crazy if you had just been like oh sh guess what and also what does that mean about their children and what does that mean about the and like all the ramifications of that would have been so sure. much more interesting I mean, even without just the swap <clears throat> part even bringing in more the idea of what are they offering earth to take over maybe some people are willing allies to the scrolls or not you yeah. know go into more depth on the actual invasion part of it instead of it just being a fight in new york like a fight a fight a fight yeah. a day. and then everyone's stuck in the savage land the whole time the fact that it started off so clever and like just suspense and it's a secret invasion to devolve into just a giant rumble for like five issues it was just like so disappointing
But anyways, that's <laughs> I don't rec- I don't recommend yeah. this. Yeah, this is a um, this is a big we, we not could, recommend could, yeah. on all fronts. Sorry, you guys. I thought it was going to be mm. more fun than it was. I honestly, I don't like to leave <laughs> our listeners, <laughs> viewers, with that kind of recommendation at the end. It's kind of it always makes me sad when all the yeah, rounds are like boo. But I mean, yeah, I mean. There's it's sometimes you just can't wrap it up with a nice bow, you know? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> thanks for listening. That was it. Secret Invasion. Mobius yeah, that's couch. Yeah. Part two. We did it. We did it, Good. boys. Good journey. All Good right, journey, everyone. Bye.